Google Calendar? Apple Calendar? Does time blocking really work? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to time block using Google Calendar or the Apple Calendar, and then you can decide if this is the revolutionary thing that you need to transform your productivity. Let's get into the video. Welcome, my lovelies, to the style of success. I am Kelly, and this is the right channel for you if you want to transform your mindset with success tips and you want to transform your body through style. So today I want to talk about how to time block and actually get more work done. I am someone who has struggled with being productive. I think I have a little bit of ADHD. <laughs> it's very hard to keep your attention in the right place. And with social media, I bet every single one of us gets distracted by different messages or emails and so many things bombarding our day. And then you get to the end of the day and find out that you haven't gotten all the work done for the day. Now, for me, it's not about piling on so many things to your to-do list. And it's not about trying to do too much work, but for me, it's about being productive with the time that you have and actually seeing if you can get more things done with a limited period of time. So I wanted to introduce this topic because it's been a game changer for me. It has really helped me to be more focused to finish tasks when I start them. So if you're anything like me, I know you're gonna get a lot of value from this video. So what exactly is time blocking? It's all about making sure that when you set a specific period of time to achieve a task, you actually get it done. So I'm going to be sharing my screen. Feel free to follow along. What I'm going to do is first, I'm going to show you how I set it up on the Google Calendar. And I'll also show you how to set it up on the Apple Calendar. The truth of the matter is I actually use both of these calendars. I find that both of these calendars have their own strengths. So I'm going to show you how I set them up in the two different places and then I'll show you how I sync it all together. If you want the Google Calendar, you can go to calendar.google.com. If you want to download the calendar, so I'm using Chrome, what you do is if you go to the three dotted lines, if you click on it, go down to more tools and then it gives you the option of creating a Google Calendar shortcut. But what you also need to do is you have to click on open as window, then it opens it into a new window anytime you want to open your Google Calendar. And when I do this, I'm able to download it. You can also save it here with your different applications. So the next thing I do is I create the main calendars that I need. You're able to color code it and then you're able to find what you need very easily based on the colors. So I have my analytics um, calendar, I have my business calendar, I have my marketing calendar, and then I have my YouTube calendar for my YouTube channel. So what I've realized is that it's not about scheduling every single thing. Scheduling everything just overwhelms me. But what I try to do is I create a block of time where I get things done. So 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. is that time where I switch off my phone and that is the crucial time where I get creative work done. Creative being the operative word. I mean tangible creative work. To be able to have something I can show at the end of the session, so whether it's creating an email sequence or shooting a YouTube video or a book that I'm writing, or it could be creating a design. So as I mentioned, I want to get creative work done. And the way I time block is to create a period from 9 a.m. up until 1 p.m. Within these different calendars that I've created, I have different tasks that I can try to achieve during that time. But I'm going to go into this in another video so I don't make this too long. If you want to create a new calendar, all you need to do is go down to other calendars. If you click on plus, it will say create a new calendar and you're able to create the calendar that you want. The first thing I want to do is create. I can see it went straight on to using the Kelly folder. Um, but what I want to do is I want to create time, let's say on a Monday morning to shoot my YouTube video. So I call it YouTube shoot. Sometimes I try to use different emojis just to make it interesting and fun. So I have um, some stickies on my desktop where I have different emojis. And then if it's a YouTube shoot, I could use the symbol here. Just reminds me of what I need to do during that time. And let's say this would be from 9 a.m up until 11 a.m. I create that time and I save it. As you can see, I created this and it's in the wrong calendar. My YouTube calendar is blue, so I put it as blue and I save it. So I have this time allotted for me, but sometimes you find out that the time overruns. So what you can do is just drag and drop it and then schedule it. So from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. on Monday morning, I'm shooting my YouTube video. The next thing I need to do is 
find other things that I need to do during the day. If I have a meeting, it's just easy for me to type, let's say meeting with whoever it is, save it. And this is in my calendar, which is called Kelly MacPepper. This is a default calendar that Google gives. So I just use that for any meetings that I have. I schedule it there. So on Tuesday is my marketing day. So I change it to purple. And so maybe I have to do like video SEO. Maybe I have to post to groups do something on Instagram, I save it and then I try to schedule the time. For me, it's between that 9 a.m. So I started from 9 a.m. and then maybe I drag it onto 1 p.m. On Wednesday, Wednesday is my day for business. So I put it in yellow, design, business work, design, business work, whatever it is, you know, I just put it there. So I remember what I'm doing, save it. And it's easy when you have this block of time just to focus on one specific task until you get that done. And then I could also go in between that time and, you know, add a different task that I want to do. I try to use my Thursdays for my analytics, which I put as green, green for growth. It could be YouTube and um, my website analytics that I want to focus on on the day, um, I save it, create it, and maybe on that day, it's gonna be from 10 o'clock, uh, maybe until 12. Maybe I want to do a bit of marketing. And the good thing about um, Google Calendar is once I see a color, I know what that signifies and I know what I need to be doing at that period of time. I will probably have a meeting and so I need to schedule that meeting. Save. Maybe it's an hour long meeting. I try to avoid having my meetings during my creative time. So I might have to shift that maybe until one o'clock. So let's say we do this from 10 o'clock till 12.30, good. And then I have this social media meeting at one o'clock. And then I try to find one day during the week where it's more lax, where it's easy. And so what I try to do is I might schedule on this day that I'm just going to do some design or business work, yellow, and maybe it's going to be fragrance design work. Um, and I save it and maybe I will do that on a Friday, nine to 12. This way it's easy to see at a glance what I need to do. But something else I try to do every day is that in the mornings from about half seven up until nine, once I'm done getting the kids ready for school, then I schedule some time to do some reading or some study. So let's go on and create a new calendar and let's call it the study calendar. I can choose red as the color for study. Whatever that time is, sometimes for me it's 8.30 to 9. I will write the specific thing I want to study. Maybe there is a particular book that I want to read or listen to. I think I'm going to grow rich. You can see that if it's overlapping, the calendar will shift it a bit, but I don't want any overlap for me. Keeping it simple is vital to me being able to accomplish all I need to do. I'll show you now how I do this on my Apple calendar. So I have it here on my desktop. I have actually synced my Google calendar to my Apple calendar. So when I click on it, everything is out here already arranged and organized for you to see. But the discouraging thing that I find with syncing my Google Calendar to my Apple Calendar, it doesn't always put it in the right color. So I always find that I have to go in for a YouTube shoot. I probably have to go in and change the color. Yes. So I go in, I click on it and it's meant to be YouTube. If you go onto your Apple Calendar, if you click on it, you can click add an account. And then you have the option of choosing if you want it to be Google, if you want it to be Yahoo, or if you just have a different calendar that you want to use. And so for me, because I wanted to sync my Google calendar with my Apple calendar, I chose Google and then I created the calendar from there. But in terms of the calendar, if you go onto preferences and there, what I do is I click on the button to enable the account. And I also show for this calendar to be refreshed every minute. If I make any adjustments, whether I'm on my Apple calendar or my Google calendar, the adjustment is done, you know, every minute or so. If you go on to general, I want it to be seven days a week. You can decide that you only want to have five days of the week showing. I try to start my week on Monday. For me, it's easy that way. And I scroll week by week rather than daily. 
because it's just easy for me to see what I need to do at a glance. I try to set my day to start from 7 a.m. up until 6 p.m. My screen shows 7 a.m. up until 6 p.m. But because I have a large screen, it will show more than 6 p.m. I put 15 hours at a time just so that if I have any meetings, everything can get scheduled and I can see it at a glance. You can also decide to click on show in the birthday calendar. You can also try to click on um, the holiday calendar so you can see everything that is happening. Now, I don't use the alternative calendars, so I'll just close that and we can get onto it. But if I was going to do it from scratch, so if you go onto file, you can go to new calendar and you can feel free to create a new calendar. So what I do on this calendar is that if you go onto the plus button, you can create a quick event. But what I find easy is just double clicking where I need it to be and then just filling in the details there. So let's say it's going to be YouTube shoot, you know, as I mentioned before, um, I do that there. I then extend it until 1 p.m. I just add my emoji signs so I know what it is I'm doing. You can add location. So for example, if I need to go elsewhere to shoot, I put the location there so that it's easy for me once I have my phone, I can um, find the location and get to where I need to get to. Then, you know, just the same way we did it on the Google Calendar, I will go on to create more events or double click. It's showing me blue. I can always change the color of the calendar. So if it's a marketing I want to do, and that's what I normally do on a Tuesday, I will click on marketing. I will put it for the period of time that I need. But the good thing for me is that because this is um, native to the Apple system, I like the overview and I like the way it looks on the screen. However, for the Google Calendar, I prefer the richness of the colors. When I'm looking at it on my phone, it actually looks nice. You can see the colors, you can see everything that you need to get done. The only thing I find challenging, it doesn't show you when the time starts and when it ends. If you go onto the Apple Calendar and you look at the list that has been created, you're able to see daily what you need to get done. You can shrink it so you see it, you can expand it and also what needs to be done for the week. But looking at it here, it doesn't look that attractive, but if you're looking at it on the Google Calendar, it's more visually appealing to see what needs to be done. And so that is how I try to sync both of them because I find that it's easy for me to use both calendars. I can have the best of both worlds. I can have the color coding the way I want it to, but also when I'm on my phone, I still have my calendar and it's easy to access it. Great. So that is how you can schedule and time block your day so that you can be more efficient and get more work done. So as I mentioned earlier, it's really going to depend on what it is you're trying to accomplish or achieve when it comes to your calendar. If you want the visual side of things, I prefer the Google Calendar. It looks much nicer, but you could also sync it to the Apple Calendar because I find the Apple Calendar easy to use because it's native to my phone and it's native to my desktop and it's easy for me to adjust things on the go with the Apple Calendar. So I tend to use both of them. So it's going to depend on your preference. Let me know if you gained any value from this video. Are you going to be incorporating time blocking into your productivity? I'm going to include these other videos that you can go watch and I hope you have fun and I will see you in the next video.